This is Dr. Caudill Miller with Dr. Miller's Guide to Neurology. Today we're going to talk about a difficult topic, ataxia. Ataxia is a walking issue, an inability to walk a straight line, balance issue. So we talk about ataxia, we talk about walking like a drunk man. Um, ataxia can be for the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system, and you can see it with normal aging. Um, it's just a tough, tough diagnosis. When we see an elderly person come in and say they ataxic and can't walk and walk like a drunk person, it's very rare that we find a reversible cause of this. So what's the differential diagnosis? So number one is cerebral vascular disease. So when you think of ataxia, you think about the balance center. There's an area of the back of the brain, we'll talk about this later, the cerebellum, which is responsible for your balance. So the cerebellum, the brain stem, you know, you know, disorders there. You can also see ataxia just with generalized cerebral vascular disease. You know, people go get an MRI and they've got just tons of white matter disease. You hear this all the time. You know, when doctors see someone ataxic who's younger, they always think about alcohol because you see it with alcohol abuse. And you know, I've all seen a drunk driver test when someone's trying to walk when they've been drinking. You know, they're ataxic. You can see it from medications, and there are many, many, many medications that can cause ataxia. And sometimes the doctor or the healthcare provider just has to look up every drug you're on. But you see it with barbiturates, you see it with the benzodiazepines, you know, like Ativan and Xanax. See, with all the sedatives, all the anti-epileptic drugs, there's not a single one you can look up that doesn't mention it can cause ataxia. Chemotherapy, just so many drugs, chemotherapy. And we don't keep up with the chemotherapy agents because they just change every three to six months. You know, lithium, sometimes your statins for your cholesterol can cause ataxia. Uh, amiodarone, one of the cardiac medications, some of the HIV drugs. You just have to look these drugs up. You can also see ataxia with, with CNS neoplasms, cancers of the brain. You can see it with B12 deficiency. You know, severe B12 deficiency causes combined systems degeneration, and one of the symptoms are ataxia. You see it with low thyroid, hypothyroidism. You see it with neurosyphilis. We don't see much, that, much of that anymore. But 20 years ago, we would see more cases of neurosyphilis. But we always work it up if we don't find a cause. You see it with electrolyte issues like low sodium, hyponatremia, high calcium, hyperkalemia. You see it with renal failure, you see it with liver failure. Um, some people come in with perineoplastic syndromes, you know, ataxia, and they're discovered to have cancer. So you can see with perineoplastic syndromes. You also see with hereditary cerebellar degeneration, people who have family history, and you look at their brains, they're normal, but their cerebellums are severely atrophic. We commonly see ataxia with peripheral neuropathy, very, very common. We see it with multiple sclerosis. Um, we see it with previous head trauma. A lot of times with previous head trauma, you don't see any damage in the cerebellum, but people are ataxic. You know, severe COVID infections, um, COVID-19 infections can cause ataxia, and you can see it with the long COVID. You see it with Lyme's disease, chicken pox, other infections can cause ataxia. And autoimmune diseases like sarcoid, lupus, celiac disease, um, you see it congenitally, like the global term we call cerebellar palsy. So what are the symptoms of ataxia? Just poor coordination and poor balance. Uh, they have difficulty to find motor, motor tasks, um, very unsteady gait, tendency to fog. We see so many broken bones, broken hips. Um, sometimes with it severe, you'll see a cerebellar speech we call scanning speech, very monotonous level speech. Rarely difficulty swallowing. So what's the workup? We start out by doing an MRI of the brain if we can. Sometimes you have to do a CT of the brain if they have a stimulator or a pacemaker. Do an MRI of the brain, look at the cerebellum, look at the brain stem, look at white matter disease. They do a metabolic work of the things we mentioned, CBC chem profile, thyroid, B12, vitamin D, RPR, perineoplastic panel, folic acid, CPK, and then do a nerve conduction, EMG study if you're concerned about peripheral neuropathy. And then, you know, ataxia can be seen from inner ear issues, and neurologists cringe when we talk about inner ear issues, so we refer them to the ENT doctors for evaluation. So ataxia is a real, real difficult problem. And it's one of those disorders when you come into a neurologist's office, they just hope that they get lucky. And if they find something, it's going to be really quick. Um, and most of the time, it's not fixable. So that's ataxia. So like, comment, subscribe. Um, more later.